So I'm here today to talk to you about front-end development and uh, how to cope when reality actually hits you. Uh, first off, I'm Jorge Varendes. I'm a front-end developer here at Mercedes. I've been here for roughly one and a half years. Uh, and just for a brief uh, introduction, Mercedes-Benz I.O. Uh, we are located in three main locations, Lisbon, Stuttgart, and Berlin. And we're mainly responsible for the whole digital Mercedes-Benz ecosystem. The product I am um, involved with is the actual wholesale website. Um, and I'm, I've been a front-end developer since I joined in this particular project. So before we start, let's start with a little context, okay? Looking into the past 10 years, um, we have prior and up to 2009, but in 2009, uh, W3C specification compliance was met and Steve Jobs killed Flash. What this means is, is and why I had left it here, um, is because um, this is when the current core front-end stack as we know it today took off. So before everything that was more dynamic and interactive was done with Flash, uh, and now it's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, of course. Back in the day, we used jQuery as well. In 2012, React, uh, Angular was launched. Then 13, React was launched. 14, Vue was launched. And uh, in between, of course, a lot of other frameworks uh, surfaced. And uh, demand for front-end developers skyrocketed uh, since. So, and if you look for front-end engineer in LinkedIn, this is more or less the results you get. This is, I got it from yesterday or the day before, but roughly 6, 600,000 people worldwide, 5,000 and a half for Portugal alone. So, and currently front-end is a unique place exactly because of that, right? So there's a lot of demand. Um, almost everything happens in a browser, be it websites, web apps, PWAs, whatever. Um, and in the end, it's all HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Plus, as a front-end developer, you can be full stack without even learning a new language. So that's also great. Which also brings us to the tech stacks. This is from last year's State of JS. Um, for JavaScript alone, this, this was the scenario last week, uh, last year, sorry. Um, it doesn't really matter what's there. You know that above there's React, Vue, Angular, Ember, and such. And below, the other ones uh, that last year were not as expressive as the six ones on top. So effectively, effectively for us front-end developers, we're currently like this, right? So um, every two months, a new framework comes out. Um, so we're constantly on the verge and looking to something new all the time. Which in short means there's a high demand. Um, tech stack options are great, are plentiful. So we have everything. Absolutely, but not really. Enter reality. So more often than not, you enter a company, you join a company or you change product. And tech stack was not exactly what you were expecting. The code base is old and stale. Maintenance work is mostly what you do. <coughs> so it's not really something you can relate to on a day-to-day -day basis. So my question to you today is, how do you prevent motivation this is not my quote, by the way. Um, that I find this one, but I find this one interesting, that it is wanting to do it more than you want to sleep from becoming habit, which would be 
writing the same code day in, day out, fixing endless bugs, doing monotonous stand-ups that lead to professional stagnation and emotional burnout. Again, not my quote. I'll try to come up with some solutions for this. Um, the next following slides will be entirely my own opinion, and they're riddled with common sense. Just uh, for a quick show of hands, because I forgot to do this uh, at the start of this uh, talk, I would like to ask you to raise your hands if you've been working in a project for more than five years, or in a company, or as a front-end developer for more than five years, just to get a grasp. One guy. For, for more than five years. <laughs> okay. Um, so, and as a team lead, has anyone, is anyone a team lead or a tech lead or? Okay, two guys. Makes us three. We're not alone. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, let's continue. How to keep motivation from dropping in a long-running project or uh, f um, where, where the product is not actually what you thought it would be from the get-go. And these are just my opinions on how to prevent this. And uh, if you ever become, uh, and I hope you do, uh, become senior developers and uh, someone that other developers look up to, I hope that you keep these in mind. So, yeah. Challenge yourself. Uh, as front-end developers, uh, we're constantly being challenged, right? Uh, show of hands, who has changed frameworks in the last two years? Yeah, so, okay. Uh, so, yeah, as I said before in the previous slides, market is constantly evolving, uh, tech stacks are constantly changing, and we're constantly being thrown uh, thrown into the water, uh, having to learn how to swim all over again, right? So challenge can, challenges can be difficult, but they can also be interesting. Um, and it's also very rewarding, of course, when you overcome a challenge. So don't be afraid of challenges and keep challenging yourself. Also, as a senior developer, please don't hog all of your team's difficult challenges for yourself. Um, instead, try to motivate your teammates to embrace the challenging tasks. So if you have someone that is not a senior or not as experienced as you, instead of saying, I'll do this because this is more difficult, instead, try to say to someone less experienced, hey, man, you take this one, and I'll be backing you up. What this does is not only it will improve team growth because that guy will not be extra weight, let's call it like this. Um, so it will improve your team growth, but offering your help will also improve trust within the team. Build new stuff. A little context. So I work in a project that is almost four years old or more than four years old. Frankly, I don't know for sure. Um, so we don't get the chance to build new stuff every day. Instead, we're constantly working on maintenance jobs. Um, so what we do in our team is we all suggest things to do outside of the scope of the product. So when we have time, be it um, at home, I myself don't have much time at home to do stuff, but the other guys do, so uh, that works. So whenever you feel the, the itch to build something new, maybe you should try and build it. And do something that you actually want to build. So one guy in my team, uh, he's a dungeon master for, Game of, uh, for Dungeons and Dragons. So what he does is, or what he has been doing is, he's building his own dungeon master app to help him in um, his dungeon master stuff. <coughs> Some other guys, other two guys in my team, where are you, Afonso Gonçal? Show your hands. There you go. <laughs> These two guys are actually building something um, to help us in our day-to-day -day job. And I'll go to that in a minute.
but they are building something that will help us in our product further down the road. So we like to build things. I think that is mostly one of the things that drives us developers uh, and motivates us is that we like to build things, so go build them. Within your team, you should always promote learning and knowledge sharing. sharing. Programming is constantly learning, right? Um, and front-end development, development in itself is actually like in, in the pinnacle of all this evolution because it keeps changing day in, day out. So whenever you learn something new, be it at your workplace, be it at home, try to share that uh, with your team. Share what you've built. Say, go to your team and say, hey man, I built this. Uh, I want to talk to you about this, about this. So share it. Make it a little internal talk. Because we work in a, 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 a company that is situated in more than one place, our team is located both here and in Germany. So what we did to cope with this is we have a regular call that happens every week. Um, and we actually have this call every week and we talk to each other, tell us, tell each other what we did that was of interest, what is going to be our um, future endeavors and whatnot. Um, yeah. Also, if you're doing bug fixing in your product, it is important that you also share this with your team. So if you fix the bug that it was I don't know, that guy over there has been dealing with a bug, a critical bug for the past two days. I'm sure that when we end this, when he uh, fixes it, we will have a call just to mention this, see what he did, find out what he found out, so that everyone is up to par when we um, get over it. Who here works in a typical agile way? other than MBIO guys. <laughs> anyway, um, try to communicate and negotiate with the, your management, your project managers, your POs, whatever. Uh, say for instance, you want to introduce, you, you hear me today and you go like, well, this is a good idea. I should promote knowledge sharing in, the, in my company. Um, if you think this is a good idea and if you want to do it, try to introduce it to the people that run your product or your company or your project or whatever. <coughs> you might be surprised and you might get something out of it. Um, and if you try something new and it works or it didn't work, try to iterate on it, uh, draw some conclusions and iterate again and draw some conclusions and iterate again until it works for you. Or just come to the conclusion that it didn't work and, yeah, it's also okay. Also, as developers, we like to do our thing at our own speed. I'm guilty of this. Who else is guilty of this? Okay. Because we do creative work, right? We, we're not, we're not uh, masons. We're not building walls. So our input um, and our output are not linear, so we have a lot of convoluted process in the way. So we should try and muster more autonomy for us because this is a high-valued motivational um, asset to our lives. More autonomy, however, means that you'll have to live up to that autonomy. So if you go full autonomous and the PO says, okay, man, you do what you do what, whenever you have to do it, but then you don't deliver sprint tasks, that doesn't work, right? So you have your, you have your work scheduled for you, make sure you live up to par with to the expectations that they put on you. Also because I worked in a company um, previous to MBIO where the CEO did a lot of micromanagement. As you can imagine, that is extremely detrimental for, for you as a developer. <coughs> Sorry. Um, 
and to your work because you're doing something and then comes one guy that, well, wrote code once uh, and tells you, hey man, this, I want this done differently. So autonomy is something that you should strive for in your workplace. Acknowledge others and their ideas. So no matter how good your processes are, they can be improved. Not trying to say that processes in our product are brilliant, far from it, um, but they are what they are. And actually, those two guys over there decided, let's improve on this. Let's take the opportunity that we have because we have the opportunity and we're fortunate enough to have an opportunity to completely rewrite our code base. Um, they came up with the idea of let's do something new, let's learn something new, but while we're at it, let's improve our processes and workflows. <coughs> so if you, if you have someone like this in your team, don't shut them down in them immediately, just see where it goes and acknowledge their ideas. And this, of course, will not only make them feel good, but they'll feel empowered. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, and you'll get, uh, you'll, you'll increase your team's productivity, which is also a plus, right? This, of course, is closely related. Praise your teammates' work. Um, words are cheap, right? It's easy to say, hey, man, Noon, you look good today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, they're cheap, but they can actually, for someone that has been doing a strenuous job, like creating something really difficult, not only does paycheck work, of course, that's why we do it, <coughs> but actually having someone come up to you and say, hey man, that was really nice work, I liked what you did, I liked your solution, do it. It's, it's cheap. But it's not meaningless, of course, unless, of course, you don't mean it. But please mean it when you say it, right? The, this will feed their need for good self-esteem. Um, and they will become more optimistic and energetic, of course. At least that's how I like to think that works. Leading by example. If you show you don't care in this, you don't need to be a team leader for this. No, you don't need to be like the senior developer in your team. Nothing of the sort. So if you're working with the guy that joined the company or the product the same day you did, and if you don't, sh if you don't show that you care and you're working in close relationship, odds are that he will mirror your behavior. So try to show... Um, that you care and show enthusiasm for your product, for your project. Try not to get uh, overwhelmed with all the negative ideas. Well, this code base is shit. Um, sorry, I don't know if this is PG-13. <laughs> um, this code base doesn't work. I don't understand why the guys did this. So <coughs> instead, try to look at this uh, from the positive um, uh, aspect of life. Never abandon your team, of course. Um, I think this one goes without saying. Try not to consistently procrastinate. Of course, we, I, at least I do, procrastinate sometimes. It, I'm, the, I'm a developer, so I like the autonomy, which means that I procrastinate a lot. Sometimes. <laughs> and if you have to, if we have to go home, of course. Um, and you see that someone is right there drowning in some sort of weird bug or whatever. Just try not to go away and say, hey man, see you tomorrow. Because if he's drowning and he's flustered with, every, with something, you might as well ask him if he needs help, even though it might take you 30 minutes more to get home. And of course, people generally don't respect those who can't meet to their own standards, so set the bar by your own example. You can't just say, hey, man, you need to be here until 8, 8 p.m. and you go home at 5 p.m., right? That doesn't work. So if you ask someone to be